When you're buying a home and going through the mortgage process, one of the most sensitive pain points a lot of people have is in regards to their banking, specifically their bank statements, and showing the money that they have available to buy the property. So in today's lesson, I wanted to give you guys some best practices and things that I teach my clients to do through the process and good information that you'll wanna to know to have the most streamlined and least stressful process possible. Hey, it's Robert Weinberg, and on this channel, we empower people to take control of their futures through expert mortgage and financial strategies. In today's lesson, we're gonna be talking about banking best practices for home buyers. So when you're buying a property and going through the mortgage process, one of the most important pieces is going to be how much money do you have available to pay at closing for down payment and closing costs, and where is that money coming from? What bank accounts, what investment accounts, gifts, etc., where you're getting those funds. So I want to discuss some best practices that I use with my clients to make the mortgage process as, as simple and least stressful as possible for you. The first thing is you don't want to have any large deposits. Now, large deposits are going to be defined as deposits that are greater than 25% of your gross monthly income. So if you make $4,000 a month, any deposit more than $1,000 is typically going to be questioned, where did that money come from? Smaller deposits, a few hundred dollars and whatnot, are usually going to be okay, but you especially don't want to do large cash deposits because those have to be seasoned for 60 days before they can be used. The next thing is you don't want to be moving money all around. So I have some clients that have money constantly going to all different bank accounts with different institutions and savings, checking, money market, and all that, and they're just moving money from one account to another. That can create a huge burden on you and your lender to prove where all those transfers were going and where they were coming from and where the source is for those. It can create a lot of extra work and a lot of extra documentation. So the best practice there is just have one or two bank accounts that you use. I have a lot of my clients, they have one checking account where their, uh, their paychecks go into, and then they have a savings account where they can move money just to have for their closing. If you just have one or two accounts, that's okay, but it's the people that have several accounts that are moving all over the place that creates that big stress and that big burden for them and their lender through the loan process. The next thing is going to be undisclosed debts. So what I'm talking about here is debts that are not on your credit report, but are being paid out of your bank account. When the underwriter is looking at your bank accounts, they're going to be going through line by line and they're going to be looking at where is your money coming from and also where is it going. If they see an auto loan being paid out of your bank account, yet you do not have an auto loan on your credit report, it will probably be questioned. If they see credit card payments being made, but there's no credit card showing on your credit report, that may be a situation where they're going to ask questions. And in some circumstances, having that undisclosed debt may be, put you in a position where you don't even qualify for that mortgage anymore. So that's a huge, huge thing that you want to discuss with your lender is if you're paying debts out of your bank account that are not on your credit report, it could be a big red flag. Next thing is talking about automated banking verifications. So this is a best practice that I try to use as often as possible. Depending on your lender and the loan program that you're qualifying for, you may or may not be able to use automated banking verifications. The system that I use typically is called account check. The way that it works is you can simply log in. You'll get a, a link sent to you by your lender. You log into your online banking through that link, and then it will authorize transactions to be downloaded so we can get a verification of your different transactions going back 60 or 90 days. Now, it does not allow the lender to do anything with your bank account. It's read-only access, so they can't change anything. They can only read the transactions that are on there. One of the coolest parts of the automated verification is that it will allow us to refresh your bank account for up to 60 days typically. So if you made a deposit on the house that didn't clear your account yet, and then a week into the mortgage process it does clear your account, your lender can simply click a button to refresh your history and show that versus you having to provide an updated transaction history. So it just makes the labor involved with providing documentation a lot less when you're able to use these automated banking verifications. So check with your mortgage advisor or loan processor to see if this is gonna be applicable to you and your particular loan program. You wanna be able and willing to source these deposits 
that are going into your bank account. If there's a check that was deposited for $10,000, it's just going to show on their check deposit. They don't know where that money came from. So you're going to need to produce a paper trail of where that money came from. We're going to need to show copies of checks. We're going to need to show copies of letters and things that may be involved. So just be ready and willing and able to show them a paper trail of any money that's going into your bank account. Another common occurrence would be like if you sold something and deposited the money into your bank account, or if you got money from a friend or family member. These are all things that you don't want to do, but if you do, then you want to be ready to source these transactions because they are going to be questioned. If you're going to be getting a gift as part of your loan transaction, most people think that the gift donor needs to write a check to you as the home buyer. And while that can be done, one of the best practices that I use to lessen that paperwork burden is to have the gift donor send the money directly to the title company or attorney that's doing your closing. It's just going to greatly reduce the documentation that needs to be provided. If they give you the money, you have to show a copy of the check. You have to show that it cleared your account. You have to show that you're sending that money to the title company. Whereas if they send it directly to the title company, all you have to do is just show that they sent the money and then the title company confirms that they received it. It's a lot less paperwork than going the other route. You really want to communicate, as I talk about, with your mortgage advisor and with your loan processor as much as possible, especially around these topics with banking because this can be a big issue that can cause delays in your home buying process and in your mortgage process. Be upfront with them, be honest, and communicate as much as you can so that if any issues, red flags, or problems arise, we can move forward with getting them solved as quickly as possible. I hope that this has given you some clarity and I really hope that it helps you in your home buying process. If it's your first time watching us here, please go ahead, hit the subscribe button and also click the bell so you get notified on all of our future content. If I can be of assistance to you or anyone that you know with the home purchase, mortgage or refinance process, please feel free to reach out to me. You can contact my office via text, private message or phone call. Again, I hope this helps and you found value here today and we'll talk to you soon.